Look, they, they can't take away the fact that the Cowboys have played great. You know, they blow the Giants out in week one. They score all three phases of the game. They take care of business against the Jets, embarrass Zach Wilson, Dwayne Brown, and they make the Jets' defense look like Swiss cheese. But wake me up after they play San Francisco in a couple weeks because that's going to be the litmus test for this team. I think they have the Cardinals this weekend. That should be easy peasy for the Dallas Cowboys. But San Francisco's looming out there. And ultimately, they're going to be judged by how they play against the better teams in football and then where they wind up in the division against the Eagles and then obviously much later on in the season as we get ready for the playoffs. That being said, it shows you what happens when you win. Yeah. When you win, nobody remembers the warts that you have on your resume. On top of that, it, it looks good when Kellen Moore is doing this thing somewhere else, and now you have this offense yeah. for the Dallas Cowboys. The sacks are down. Yeah. And by all accord, man, this looks like an alpha, even though we talked about the defense being on world, this looks like an alpha that could potentially lead the team if the defense is not on par where they need to be. So they look like the most complete team in football. And I, what I'm most happy about, and if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, we have, they haven't unlocked Brandon Cooks, who's, beat it, who's brought there. To, right. beat, to beat the top off the defense. So this offense has a Greg, lot of options. Here's the thing that I like most about Mike McCarthy. I saw some video after the game where they were talking about Sauce Gardner was talking to CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott and those guys after the jersey swap and all that nonsense. <laughs> and he was like, how come you didn't come after me? And Dak goes, why would I throw the ball against the other team's best defender? I never had to, so I didn't. That's Mike McCarthy play calling, and that's a Ph.D. play caller. Yeah, that's what's been most impressive, his ability to get Dak to truly buy into this style of play. Stylistically, it looks different for Dak, but he understands this is what's going to have us successful early. Now, when I need it to be that guy, I can still be that guy. But for me, I love everything that Jerry Jones said about uh, Mike McCarthy. And, yes, it's early. It's only two games, but – the way that they played, the way that the, it looks, Mike McCarthy, his fingerprints, like Jerry Jones said, is all over this game plan. Yep. And it's not just with Dak. Mm -hmm. It's moving C.D. Lamb, your best talented individual offensively in position to where he's in an advantageous uh, position to be successful. Yep. That's what's going to help your quarterback. That's what's going to help your offense look as good as it's looked uh, in these first two weeks. So I love everything that he's done. Look, here's what I, I, I hated about it as a Jet fan, but I respect it. You know, the New York Jets decided we're not going to take our best defensive player and have him guard their best offensive player being Sauce Gardner on C.D. Lamb because the Jets don't play a lot of man-to-man -man defense. Robert Saw said that in an interview yesterday. But Dallas said, we know they're not going to adjust because they're incapable of it. So what are we going to do? We're going to take our best player and move him away from their best player. That's just smart. Yeah, and so a lot of times teams get in trouble because typically, competitively, yeah. As a player, you want to go against the best. And so you want to kind of beat your head no, against a yeah, drum. Yeah, yeah. You want to kind of beat I, your head against a drum and say, you know what? <laughs> mano y mano, best on best. When the reality is the best position to put your guys in right. is when you have the distinct advantage. And it, it also shows that the, the lack of range that was about Sunday game. The Jets had an opportunity to get after Dak, and they didn't. They set in zone because they were so terrified of getting beat deep. And we lost a couple of DBs early in that game. What happened for the Dallas Cowboys, which was great, is the fact that you don't talk about Zeke Elliott no more. Tony Pollard has done a sufficient job enough where they look like a balanced offense along with Dak Prescott. So credit, credit uh, Mike McCarthy. They look great right now. Am I the only person that just wants to pump the brakes a little bit on the celebrating the Cowboys and celebrating Mike McCarthy and all this? Am I the only person here that's like, I think you are. Dak yes. Prescott really hasn't done anything. I can't think of a single play. We've all watched pretty much every snap of the Cowboys. I can't think of a single play yeah. where they did something because of Dak. Yeah, but that's the point. The well, that's what they're trying to do. He's playing in under control within the confines of a responsible offense, which is we're not going to put you in a spot outside of the bad pass that Saul should have intercepted and have you throwing the ball into double coverage, triple coverage. We're going to be smart. It's been it. great for two weeks. Well, It'll no. be great for three weeks. Yeah. But week four and week five against the 49ers and the New England Patriots, the old Dak will come back. And that guy that we know and love <laughs> will at least throw three interceptions in those two games. Well, listen, I promise it, it, you. It goes, to, it goes to being an office lineman. You know when an office lineman is doing a great job when they don't talk about you. Right. And right now, if you're Dak Prescott, and when they don't talk about you and they say, well, he had a game, that's a good day for Dak Prescott. We're not talking about the interceptions. We're not talking about the malice right. on the sideline. We're not talking about anything other than him just being a good quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys is a good day for Dak Prescott. You know, a wise man once said that offensive linemen are like your teeth. 
You need them, <laughs> but you never want to know that they're there. <laughs> right. Right? You follow that because then, you know, it's yeah, over. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> talking about all good things. All good things in, in, in Dallas. Nailed it. I'm just telling you what they said. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the guy that invented it. I'm just a messenger, so kill somebody else. Um, all right, listen, from uh, what's going on in Dallas, that's really good. To Cincinnati, it's not really good. 0-2, oh, good chance Joe Burrow doesn't play. And now you're starting to see the results of bad football verbally. And that is Jamar Chase talking about, we got to start giving me the ball deep. So all of a sudden, we've got a problem with the play calling. <laughs> we got a me guy a sudden, on We've got a problem with our quarterback, with our head coach. Me go, I want the ball. I want the ball deep. Well, let's take a look at Jamar Chase. <laughs> Jamar Chase is getting ready to get paid. Jamar Chase recognizes that my stats are not going to be what they used to be now. I think we all recognize why. Joe Burrow is hurt, and that shouldn't affect him, but you know how it goes. While you played wide receiver, mm -hmm. first thing you do every Monday is, how do I stack up against all the other wide receivers because I want to get paid. This is showing you a problem is building in Cincinnati. No, it's not a problem from a, is Jamar Chase going to get oh, paid? It, no, problem, it, it's problem. not. He's going to get paid. But what happens is you start to get a little frustrated sure. because of the lack of usage that is going on with him. He's always been a big play guy. And when we look at this Bengals offense, one of the things that jumps off the page is that they can get down the field. They stretch, the, they put stress on defense. Right. That has not been in existence this season, primarily because your quarterback is hurt. Yeah. He can't drop back and drive off that. Meaning that, he can't that, throw right. the deep ball. So it, it looks different but for let them me, right let me now. Let me jump in, Greg, and, and this is why I disagree with you, because when you're Jamar Chase and everybody knows the issue is Joe Burrow, you want to kind of make it, you want to make it about us and the family. Sure. Right now, he seems like He's stepping out the house and telling the world, okay. we have a problem in here. I'm not a part of the offense. Joe Burrow is hurt, and nobody cares about my feelings. Right. And so, when you, so it sounds like a me guy. Yeah. We know what's going on. Figure it out in-house. Yeah, here's the other problem. Jamar Chase, two games in, has 10 catches yeah. for, what, 70 yards, zero touchdowns, and they're 0-2. And there's no guarantee who's going to be their quarterback this week or next week based on the calf injury to Joe Burrow. And that's exactly what's going on. He's a young guy. He knows he's going to get paid. Yep. He wants all the accolades, all the stats, all the touchdowns, and he's not getting the ball. A large part of it is that they've lost these two games. Yeah. Like, so for me, I played the position, guys. We get that. Yes. I understand. I, think we know that. I don't think you do get this. We do get that. Because, like, you every, you every, every, your your leg. Leg. Every, every time you, <laughs> every time you speak out as a wide receiver, when there's a, a level of frustration, it's like, oh, there's the me, the me guy. No, I'm important to this offense. But you wouldn't have said nothing if, they, if you were in that situation. I, but I've said things before. But you and wouldn't I, have said that, Greg. What I'm saying is, I may not have said it in that way, in if, that manner. If but Aaron Rodgers was hurt and you felt yourself slipping out of the offense, I know for a fact, Greg Jennings, you wouldn't have said, I need, to, I need to get the ball. We can go deeper. There's things we can't do. You would have masked that situation because you understand it's a team sport. The offense is a unit. It's not about Greg Jennings. It's not about Greg Jennings, but, but it is about <laughs> Greg Jennings if we want to have success. Like, let's be, let's be honest. We, if, uh, if Joe Burrow can be healthy. Do we all sit up here on this desk and believe that they're going to be successful without getting Jamar Chase involved? No. 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 So, but, but to your point, winning is the ultimate deodorant. But the fact that they stink right now yes. and Joe Burrow is hurt, there's an issue. And my point goes back to the fact that when you're Chase and you don't have T. Higgins saying anything, you don't have Tyler Boyd or Joe Mixon, other weapons of the offense coming out in public, you're saying, well, I could do more. Give me the ball. It's only you. So you start to ostracize yourself in that locker room. And if you're a young man trying to get paid for our management, I'm saying, you know what? I got T. Higgins. Well, he seemed like a problem. And here's the other problem. Not yet, but if I'm Higgins and Boyd and a reporter comes up to me and goes, hey, Jamar Chase said the problem is that he's not getting the ball enough. How do you feel about that? But then it becomes a problem. And I'll tell you something. I'll tell you where what it goes also. <laughs> the next step of this is Zach Taylor, the head coach, go, winds, finds himself on the hot seat too. Because then people start questioning, how come you're not giving the ball to Jamar Chase? How come you haven't figured out the offense? Bop, 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 bop. 
So that's what's next. One thing that's happening here is it's not necessarily getting the ball to Jamar Chase. It's when you close your eyes and think about a Jamar Chase catch, it's on the sideline. It's deep ball. He's making a play against the DB. That's not – he hasn't had that opportunity. They're 0 for 13 in balls that go over 15 yards you. with one pick. And he's saying – he's saying literally, give me a chance. He's like, just throw it up there. I know you're not 100%. Throw it up there. Give me a chance. Let me make a play down the field. Yeah. Plus said, we've got go route guys. Except for this. If that's what but I've there. done thus far, and I'm Zach Taylor, I'm not throwing the ball but deep. Jacoby, we're not talking about what they can't do. We're talking about the current state. We know they're, they have the possibilities and the capability. The problem is Joe's hurt. So don't tell me the problem. Give me the solution. And if you're saying the solution is get me the ball, then it makes you seem like a, a me guy because there's other options. You have to do more with the offer. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.